Okay, this is part two of the editing behavior preferences in Reaper. Next, we're going to check out the vertical zoom center and the horizontal zoom center. This decides what happens when we zoom in vertically or horizontally as far as what's focused as we zoom in. So vertical zoom center is for zooming from top to bottom, making it taller or shorter. So by default, it set the track at center of view. So let's see what happens. So now if we zoom in vertically, it's gonna focus on the track in the center. Let's zoom in a bit. Right now the track in the center is track four. So if we zoom in even more, track four always stays in focus. Let's zoom out and go to track two being in the center. If we zoom in, track two is always in the center. So that's how it vertically zooms in. But we could change that right here to top visible track. Now track one is on top. So if we zoom in, no matter what, we always see track one. Let's scroll down with three being on the top. If we zoom in, track three is always in focus. So we're zooming into that track. Track four always stays in focus because the top track. The next option is last selected track. So we can select this track, track four, zoom in, and we always see track four. But it also works if we unselect it. We select two and then select nothing. It zooms into track two. Five, it'll zoom in to track five. So whatever track we select last, is the one that stays in focus. The next option is track under mouse cursor. This is my favorite option because it makes it very easy to choose. Just move the mouse. Let's zoom out. If we put the mouse by track one, if we zoom in, track one stays in focus. Let's do it with track two. Track three. So I find it a bit quicker to just move the mouse and zoom in. And that's the track that gets focused on. So that's my personal favorite. Although the default is track at center of view. Now we could also choose the horizontal zoom center. This decides how we zoom left and right. By default, it's the edit cursor or the play cursor. With that chosen, if we zoom in left to right, it zooms in by our play cursor. So if we want to zoom in over here, just click over here and then zoom in. Over here, same thing. It always stays in focus. And that's the default. But we could also choose the center of view. Now, whatever's in center, which would be probably over here somewhere, it's always gonna stay in view. Right there. Whatever's in center on the range view is always gonna be in focus. But the last option is also mouse cursor, like the one up here. And again, it's my personal favorite because we could put the mouse any way we want, let's say right here, and it always stays in focus. Just move it. Over here, the same thing, wherever the mouse is. And zoom up, does the same thing, up or in. But by default, it was the edit cursor. So replace this, that's where it's gonna zoom in. The next option over here, adjust the sensitivity when we're using tap the transient. We click it, and there's a sensitivity and a threshold setting. Let's leave it at the default, and let's see what happens when we tap the transient. So right now, if we tap the transient by hitting tab, it tabs 
to the main transients. But sometimes it misses a few, like this one right here, or these right here. It jumped from this one to this one. That's based on the sensitivity set up right here. If we make it more sensitive by raising this up here and bringing the threshold down a bit, now if we tap the transient, it's a lot more sensitive. It's a bit too sensitive, actually. Let's bring it up a bit more. That's a bit better. Now it grabs every transient, which makes it easier for splitting or cutting based on transients. And it's set up right here, which is also the same setting using dynamic split. Right over here, we would use this to cut up our items and we could adjust the transient sensitivity right here, which is the same thing as the one right here. Now I'm gonna skip this one for a minute and do this one first. Treat media item edges as transients. By default, this is turned off. If we tab the transient, it's gonna jump from here to here. Goes right from here to this one here, ignoring the edges of our item. Let's get rid of our fade. If we want those edges to count, as a transient, we would turn this on. And now, if we tab, one of the tabs is to the media edge, right here, and then moves on from there. So if we start over here and tab, even though there's no transient there, it still tabs to that spot, the media edge, as we're tabbing through. But by default, it's turned off. And jump right over it. The next option will tab through MIDI notes. This is also off by default. Let's create a MIDI item. Let's add some notes to it. So if we click over here and tab, nothing happens. But if we want to tab through each note, turn this option on right here. And now if we tab, it tabs to every MIDI note, which is kind of helpful for pasting more notes in the same spot. So if we want to add this note over here, just paste it, and it pasted that note at the exact same spot as this note. And this also works with the inline editor turned off, even in this mode. We could tab through each one and maybe split them by each note or anything else you want to do. But again, that's off by default, but we could turn it on right here. I kind of find that helpful. So that's the end of part two. Let's move on to part three, where we check out how locked items affect ripple editing behavior. Let's go. Mm -hmm.